This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of Veterinary Secrets, I'm going to discuss Cushing's disease in dogs, the signs, the causes, and natural treatments. Cushing's disease in dogs. So Cushing's disease is typically seen in our small breed, older dogs. I've got Lewis here as a demonstration. He's my one demonstration dog, and I'm down on the floor because he's just more comfortable than being up in the exam table. Um, but I'll use him to demonstrate um, for some of the clinical signs and things that you can look for if you suspect your dog may have Cushing's disease. So as I said earlier, typical, typically we're dealing with smaller breed, older dogs. The biggest clinical signs are increased drinking, increased urination, also known as PUPD. They're drinking more, they're going to the bathroom more often. Um, as far as some other clinical signs, pretty typical to see these distended swaying bellies. So what you'll see is their abdomen is just sort of hanging down here. And what's happened is that the disease itself is an increased m amount of cortisol and that'll actually weaken a variety of muscles, but in particular the muscles that hold up the belly, the abdomen. And so you actually see this sort of distended swaying abdomen, also known as sort of a pot belly. The other big changes is you pretty typically will see skin related changes. So these guys would typically come into the practice with really sparse hair coat. So they've got, you know, they've lost a lot of hair. At times it can be symmetric, maybe associated with recurring skin infections. Sometimes they can have a condition called calcinonus cutis where they can actually get sort of calcium deposits. These little white plaque looking things right underneath the skin. How much water is normal? You get asked that a lot, you know, especially in practice, asking clients to check, you know, is their dog drinking more than they should? So on average, give or take, obviously it's more if your dog is exercising more, but if it's hot. So it should be about one cup of water per 10 pounds of body weight. And that gives you a pretty good average and that's over a 24 hour period. So go ahead and what I would suggest to clients is just measure that, you know, where you're putting that, you're measuring the amount of water in their bowl and measure that over a 24 hour period. And typically by the time you're seeing your dog has got an underlying condition such as Cushing's disease, they're drinking far in excess of that. And you know, that's why you generally as a pet owner take notice of it and are bringing your dog into the veterinary. So what causes Cushing disease or hyperdrenocorticism? So the disease itself is caused by an increased amount of cortisol. So that's a hormone that's pr produced by a gland located in front of your pet's kidney called the adrenal gland. And um, there's one in front of both your, the left and right kidney. And, and it's there to prepare your pet for the fight or flight response, you know, where they've got to react. So what it does, it's released at times when your body, they, they need to react. So it's putting fat, sugar into the bloodstream, retaining sodium, retaining water um, in preparation for an action. But during this disease, you, your, their body is constantly flooded with in, this increased cortisol, producing all these se secondary clinical changes. So it's producing the increased drinking, the increased urination, the muscle wasting, you know, and, and if it's left untreated, um, especially in advanced cases of Cushing's disease, you know, it could put your dog at risk for bladder stones, at risk for diabetes, at risk for stroke. There are three primary causes of Cushing's disease in dogs. Um, majority of cases, over 80%, are caused by a benign pituitary tumor, um, the pituitary gland, which is located at the base in our dog's brain, um, it produces a hormone called ACTH, and that stimulates, that's produced, that stimulates the adrenal gland to release the cortisol. So as you can imagine, when there's a benign tumor, too much ACTH is produced, hence you have the signs, you have the increased cortisol, the signs of Cushing's disease. Um, the next most common, approximately 15%, are caused by a primary adrenal tumor. That's where you've got a tumor growing on the adrenal gland itself, producing too much cortisol. And lastly, um, it can be iatrogenic or drug-induced. In this case, for instance, we've got a dog that has allergies. He's on long-term doses of prednisone, and essentially that's the steroid. And yes, the body's gonna work to try to cut ACTH production, try to, try to cut its natural own cortisol production, um, but eventually it can get overwhelmed. And then you can see all those same clinical signs that I just discussed earlier. The PUPD, the distended abdomen, the sparse hair coat, symmetric hair loss. Um, you may have other things, the excessive panting, the pacing. 
So all those similar clinical signs. Diagnosis. Low-dose DEC suppression test. This is the most accurate in confirming Cushing's disease. About 90% of dogs will test positive. Normally, if you give dexamethasone to a healthy dog, the pituitary gland will sense this and you'll see a drop in blood cortisol. In a dog with Cushing's disease, usually a pituitary tumor, there's no drop in blood cortisol eight hours after giving the injection. The major part of diagnosis is differentiating between pituitary Cushing's disease and an adrenal tumor as the cause. This is important to know because treatment is very different for each type. If there's an adrenal tumor is present, there's a 50% chance of it being malignant. Surgery is an option and that the tumor may be removed. If the cause is pituitary, then medical options are the treatment of choice. First, before I discuss treatment, I want to discuss a couple things. Just because your dog has been diagnosed with Cushing's disease doesn't mean that he needs to be treated for it. I mean, conventionally, there's just a couple options. I'm going to show you those in the next slide. Um, and at the same point, there is a number, there's a few different alternative options um, that definitely I would have you consider. Um, but how do you take the point in that typically we're looking at an older dog, you know, somewhere to the age of 10 to 13, and we can be looking at fairly invasive treatments, especially the conventional ones. And if your dog just has mild signs, or yeah, he's drinking a bit more, going to the bathroom more often, his belly's a bit swaying, he's got a little, little bit of loss of hair coat, that in part and parcel, he can probably just live with that. Because knowing full well, so long as he's not on prednisone, nearly 80% of these guys, it's caused by a benign pituitary, pituitary tumor gland, something they can live with fine. That, that's not going to be the cause of death. The big points to looking at treating are one in the series advanced cases where there's just this beyond excessive drinking, excessive urination, excessive panting, this ravenous appetite, all those big clinical signs, the secondary muscle wasting that, that can then put your dog at risk for things like diabetes, for things like stroke. Well then in that case, then you seriously need to look at some treatment, especially the conventional options. But we're, when we're looking at a dog that has symptoms not as advanced as that, then by all means consider some of these alternative options. Treatment. Pictured here is a pretty classic dog with Cushing's disease, old small breed dog, sparse hair coat, probably symmetric hair loss, distended abdomen. There are primarily two conventional options to consider in treating your dog for Cushing's disease. Lysadrin is an older cytotoxic drug which destroys part of the pituitary gland. It has serious side effects and if given as an overdose, it can give your dog a condition called Addison's disease. Trilostane is the newer drug that is treating dogs for Cushing's disease with fewer side effects. It works by inhibiting adrenal enzymes, therefore lowering the blood cortisol. Antioxidants. Now I want to get into some of the alternative options. In Cushing's disease, the cells are more prone to injury from the high cortisol levels. The three most important antioxidants are vitamin E, vitamin C, and selenium. These are best given in combination. Giving 100 international units of vitamin E, 100 milligrams of vitamin C, and 20 micrograms of selenium for 10 pounds of body weight daily. Curcumin. ACTH secreting pituitary tumors are one of the most common causes of Cushing's disease. And in this one study said using pituitary tumor cells from mice, this lab study showed that curcumin suppressed ACTH secretion, hence lowering cortisol levels. There's something I've never heard of and something you really should be considering. The curcumin dose is of the 95% of the curcuminoids is 100 milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight daily. Ginkgo. This herb has been shown to reduce cortisol production um, similar to a venerary drug called Anapril. The dose of the tincture is one drop per pound of body weight twice daily. The dried concentrated extract is also available, giving it a dose of 3 milligrams per, per pound of body weight daily. A homeopathic product for Cushing's disease. There's a combination homeopathic sold under the brand name Cushex, which has helped some dogs. It contains dandelion, burdock, astragalus, arsenicum 30C, hiparsulf 30C, mercurus 30C, and sulfur 30C. And the last one I wanted to discuss are adaptogens. And these in particular are used for people um, when they're going in, they're being treated for adrenal fatigue. 
and in when they're being treated for that primarily because they have too much cortisol um, in their body and so what these particular treatments are the use of adaptogens and they're unique herbs that have the ability to help the body deal with stress and lower cortisol which is what we're trying to do the three most important ones are ashwagandha it's an indian herb siberian ginseng and rhodiola thank you for watching this edition of nra secrets what i want you to do now is first click that link in the box above that can subscribe you to my channel and then you can go ahead and click that link in the box below i can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies Thank mm -hmm. you.